take a look at these fractions. What do you notice? That's right, they can all be simplified. When we simplify fractions, we notice that the same factor divides into the top, the numerator, as the bottom, the denominator. And our aim is to find the largest such number, and then we divide the top and the bottom by that number. So 2 quarters becomes 1 half. 4 twelfths, 4 goes into both the top and the bottom, becomes 1 third. And 3 fifteenths becomes 1 fifth. With thirds, we have a similar idea. These don't look right to people who've worked with thirds for quite some time. When we simplify thirds, what we're aiming for is not to make the denominator as small as possible, like it is with fractions, but it's to make the third part as small as possible. That's the bit under the square root. Now we do that by, again, factorising. Just like with the fractions, we look to factorise 10 is 2 fives, and 2 is 2. To cancel the 2's gives us 1 fifth factorise 12 as 3 times 4, but if we factorise 12 as 2 times 6, it wouldn't really help. With thirds, we try to factorise the 18 in, 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 in such a way that we can simplify the third. 18 is 3 times 6. So we could write the square root of 18 as the square root of 6 times the square root of 3. Unfortunately, that doesn't help us at all, because the square root of 6 is still an awkward third, and the square root of 3 is an awkward third. So what we're looking for is square numbers that divide into 18, because then we can take the square root. And the largest, in fact the only square number other than 1 that divides into 18, is 9. So we factorise 18 as 9 times 2. The advantage here is that we can now actually work out what the square root of 9 is it's 3. And this tells us that the square root of 18 is 3 times the square root of 2. This is fully simplified because there is no square number other than 1 which divides into 2. We're going to use that to try and add together these three thirds. 18 is, three, is, is 9 twos, so we can take the square root of 9 to leave 3 root 2. 32 can be factorised in a number of ways, but the first square number that I thought of was 4. 4 times 8 makes 32, but there's a bigger square number that divides into 32, and it's 16. 16 times 2 is 32, so the 32 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 16 is 4. The largest square number that divides into 72 is 36. You shouldn't need to, to try numbers bigger than, than, than 100, there aren't any anyway here, but, but when you're trying to find the biggest square number, you shouldn't really be looking at numbers bigger than 100. 36 is the largest square number that goes into 72, so the square root of 72 is equal to the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 36 is 6. We're now in a position where we can combine these by doing a process like collecting like terms. 3 root 2's add 4 root 2's, subtract 6 root 2's, it's rather like 3x add 4x, take away 6x. The answer is root 2. 3 of them take, add 4 of them is 7 root 2, take away 6 root 2 is 1 root 2, which we just write as root 2. So the answer to the simplified version of this is square root of 2. These fractions are all ugly. There's something wrong with them. Never leave a decimal on the denominator as a fra of a fraction. In fact, never use decimals with fractions at all. Never have a fraction within a fraction. Never have a negative number on the denominator. In fact, what we should have with fractions is always a whole positive number in the denominator. Here, there's a third. So what can we do about it? Well, here, we can multiply top and bottom by 2 to give that. Of course, 2 over 1 we just write as 2. Here, multiply top and bottom by 6 would get rid of both fractions. Multiply the top by 6, multiply the bottom by 6. 
3 over 2 times 6 becomes becomes 12, 12 over 3, which is 4. Here, just take the minus sign to the top. That's equivalent to multiplying top and bottom by minus 1. The blue fractions are all better. Here, how do we make this whole positive number? Well, one way is to multiply it by itself. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. Multiply the top by the square root of 2 and multiply the bottom by the square root of 2, now we have a whole positive number on the denominator. This is called rationalising the denominator, for it takes it from an irrational third to a rational whole positive number. And that's what we're aiming for. So, to rationalise 1 over root 2, we multiply top and bottom by the number which makes the denominator a rational number, and that's the square root of 2. There are others, but the square root of 2 is the most obvious. So if we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2, we don't change the fraction. And we end up with square root of 2 divided by 2. This is a little trickier. Multiplying the bottom by 1 plus root 2, if you imagine this is x plus y, then when you square a bracket, you get the square the first, twice the product, and square the last that doesn't get rid of the square root of 2. The way to get rid of the square root of 2 is to form the difference of two squares. Square numbers can never be square roots. So the difference of two squares means 1 minus root 2 is what we need to multiply by. One way to remember this is always multiply it by the number which just makes the sign of the third bit negative. Now we get 1 plus root 2 times 1 minus root 2 in the denominator. The whole point of that is that it should be quite straightforward to find. Now 1 plus root 2 times 1 minus root 2. 1 times 1 is 1. Root 2 times 1 is root 2. Minus root 2 times 1 gets rid of the root 2. And minus root 2 times root 2 is minus 2. Minus root 2 times plus root 2 is 2. So we end up with the difference of two squares. It's easier if you know how to do it straight away. It's that squared, 1. Take away that squared, 2. Not 4. The numerator is a bit trickier. 3 take away 3 root 2. A bit trickier, but hardly. 3 take away 3 root 2. In this case, we end up with minus 1 on the denominator, so we should multiply top and bottom by 1 to get rid of that. So multiply the top by minus 1, changes all the signs round, it looks neater writing that that way round. And the denominator, 1 minus 2, but we multiply it by minus 1, so that just becomes 1. And we wouldn't even write the over 1 bit. So the answer to this, rationalise the denominator, would be just that. 3 root 2 take away 3. We could factor out the 3 if we wanted.